Next question, it says, what are the possible turning points for the continuous function? Anytime you're trying to look at turning points and the fact that they actually written this function down in terms of your vertex form, you know that it's a parabola, right? So your turning point, right? If you think about a parabola, right? You only have one turning point. So in that case, your turning point would be your vertex, right? So you're going to have a turning point at one, right? Because we know that this is x minus one, right? That gives you x minus one, which is equal to zero, right? So we know that this is going to be x is equal to one, right? All you have to do is move your negative one to the opposite side of the equation, so, so you get x is equal to one. And how do, how do you find your y value? Well, in order for you to find your y value, you would just have to plug in one on your equation, right? So this is just gonna be one minus one squared, and this is minus two. So your y value is going to be negative two, right? So from here, and this is zero, that's why. And just remember that anytime you have the vertex form, right, that means your h comma k, right, which is your vertex. So if you recall, we use the coordinates h comma k to represent the vertex. That means, that means you're just taking this as one and your k value is going to be negative two, which is just coming from this. So that's why it's one comma negative two. So that's your vertex. And that's your turning point because we know that a parabola has just one turning point. However, I think they did a different um, step here. So they actually differentiated, but I don't think that's even necessary because you're just being asked what the turning points are, right? And we know that right off the bat, it's parabola. So, But if you're doing the calculus way, then all you have to do is expand this function, right? Once you've expanded the function, you take the derivative. And why do you take the derivative? Specifically, the first derivative, because you want to identify your critical points, right? And what does your critical points tell you? If it's equal to zero, right, there is there is a possibility, right, you observe your, okay, let's just do that. So, great, so we find um, the first derivative. So, if you have your function f of x, which is equal to x minus one, this is squared minus two, when you expand this, and why do I need to expand this? Because it's easier to take the derivative. So you have x squared minus 2x, and this is plus 1, right? a minus b squared, right? It's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. That's the formula. And then you have minus 2. So as a result, you see that this is x squared, this, this is minus 2x, and this is minus 1. So when you take the first derivative, you're going to have 2x, and this is minus 2. Okay, so we look at the critical points, right? So what are the critical points? That means it's either the first derivative is equal to zero or the first derivative does not exist, right? Because we know that this never happens, right? In terms of does not exist. So if it does not exist, this never happens. And then if you look at the first derivative when it's equal to zero, then we can say that you have two X minus two and that's equal to zero. You have two X, which is equal to two, dividing both sides with two. We know that X is going to be one when the first derivative is zero. So from there, okay, what the first derivative tells you is basically your local minimum and your local maximum, right? So we know that this is x is equal to 1, right? Then all you have to do is you go back to your f of x, right? You just need to plug 1 into your equation, right? Similarly, you're just going to get negative 2, right? 1 minus 1 squared, and this is minus 2, right? You're just going to get negative 2, which is the exact same thing as your vertex, just by looking at it, right? So your first derivative tells you your local extremas. So that's why we're solving for the first derivative. Okay, that's what they did. X is equal to one is a critical point. Um, you have your increasing and decreasing. Yeah, you identify the intervals of increasing or decreasing if it's applicable. And then they're saying that since negative infinity and one, okay, so when they're trying to do that, right? If they're trying to identify the intervals of increase or decrease, right? Okay. 
Okay, so there's two ways um, to identify the intervals of increase or decrease. It's either you do the first derivative test, right? So when you have the first derivative test, all you do is you have one over here and then you take any point that is less than one, right? You cannot use one because that's that makes the function or sorry, the first derivative, right? The reason why you cannot use one is because that makes the first derivative equal to zero. That's why you can't use one. So you're going to observe what happens to the values that are before one and after one. So let's say you plug in 0 0.5, right? So when you plug in 0 0.5 to your first derivative, right? You're going to see what happens. So, Sorry, you plug in, you take 0 0.5, you plug that into your function. So where's your function? Your function was here, right? So you take any value that is before 1 and after 1. So let's pick 0 0.5, plug that into your function. So 0 0.5 minus 1 squared, and this is minus 2, right? So you're going to get a negative value, right? And then as you can see, if you look at anything that is after 1, let's say 5, right, that's after 1, this is going to be positive. So because you have a change in sign, right, which is negative to positive, right, that means, and that's what they said, the derivative of the function has a negative sign, and then you have f of x is decreasing on negative infinity to 1, so what that means is you have a local minimum, right, so at 1, over here you have a local minimum and that's where the function is right and specifically we said it was at negative 2 so we need to shift this parabola down so negative 2 so there's a local min over here and how do I know it's a local min because it changes from negative to positive right Anytime you have a local extrema, your signs change. So that's the first derivative test, or you can actually simply just graph this. 2x minus 2, right? We're going to see that it looks something like this. And you have negative and positive, right, in here. So this is where your 1 is at. And it's a linear function. That's why it's... And it's sloping up because it's a positive slope, right? So... Yeah, apply the first derivative test or you just graph 2x minus 2. Great. So, um, yeah, so it's increasing from 1 to infinity as they've mentioned. Okay, maybe we can say an alternative explanation because I don't think it's worth, um, I mean, if you don't need to apply the um, the calculus part over here, I don't think it's necessary to go in depth in terms of looking for the derivative and then trying to see where the intervals of increase or decrease is, right? Because we know that it's a parabola, so you can just say because it's a parabola, you're only going to have one vertex and that vertex would represent a turning point. So that's what I'm trying to say. Since it's a parabola, we know that a parabola can only have one turning point and that's which is, actually can only have one turning point which, which is its vertex. Okay, solution is correct. Great.